for a long time. It's going to take a lot of effort to get people back on their feet. I mean, if we take Haiti, looking at the pictures, hearing, hearing the stories coming from my country, I mean, it is really heartbreaking to see, to watch the people um, in the dirty waters, not having any other ways, to see how awful, I mean, some cities, some towns, everything is almost gone. They are saying that only 1% of the city is left. In a country that has already been through so much, I mean, in a country that has been through an earthquake, that has been through cholera, diseases, illnesses, and poverty, like no one can even imagine. And to have this hurricane come and um, completely, you know, break bridges, cut off roads, and people who didn't already have, who did not have anything, are uh, faced with that reality, no roofs over their heads, and the death toll and all that. And it is really unbelievable, unbelievably sad. We need to do the more that we can to help to help these people. Thank God I called my family over there and they are okay. And we have been praying not only for our families, but the families of those affected by the hurricanes, the family of those who have lost their lives or are now in the hospital because of the aftermath of this hurricane. It's going to take a long time and it's going to take a lot of resources for, for Haiti to at least, you know, get to a point that what we will call normal. Because this is a country that poverty has been battling for a long time. And to find itself now um, with you know, some places, they said in the south, there's not even any way, roads to get there. Um, you have to be able to fly to be able to reach the people there. And what people have lost in uh, the floods and the cattle that have died, it's going to take a lot of resources. It's going to take a lot of people, a lot of money, and a lot of hands coming together so that we can give something back or a better life to the people in, in Haiti. I am asking you to help us in our efforts. Our missionaries are down there. I talk to you all the time about our orphans and widows that we help in Haiti. But this today goes beyond helping orphans and widows. It goes beyond helping every single person affected by this and it's the majority of the country so i come to you asking you for help to join hands with us to be able to send help i mean urgent help to haiti whatever that you have go on our website you can donate on our website you can go to pastorloads.com click on donation and just say that this is that you're sending it's for the relief efforts for Haiti. You can give us a call, you can send us a check, whatever it is that you want to do. We want you to be able to reach deep into your heart and be able to help this country. Nothing is too small because at this point, they need, Haiti needs a lot of help. So nothing is too small and nothing is too big. All I'm asking for you to do today is to reach into your heart and into your pocket and be able to send us something that we can use to help the people in Haiti. Yes, we need to continue to pray. Every country in the path of Hurricane Matthew need our prayers. The people who have been affected by this hurricane, they need our prayers. And we cannot stop praying. Because this is what we are called to do, 
to, to get to see a better result. But at the same time, we can do what we can to help somebody to build some place to be able to sleep at night, to help some child to be able to have some food, I mean some decent, decent food to eat. There is something that we can do to be able to help people who have just lost everything. I mean, if you look at, if you watch on TV, on the news, on CNN or Facebook or whatever that you are watching the news, you can see what this hurricane has done to, to that country and to these other countries that were affected. And we are asking you to go on our website to pastorloads.com and donate. You can give us a call at 617-977-4755. Let us know what it is that you want to do so that you can be a part of our relief efforts for, for Haiti. Give us a call, 617-977-4755. Go on our website if you are on technology. If you are used to the technology, go on our website and donate. Um, that money will come to us immediately so that we can use it to be able to help Haiti. There are a lot that you can do, but whatever it is, don't consider it to be too small. Even if you can help one person, you have done enough. It's each of us does a little bit and we put it together we'll be able to do a lot so you can give us a call you can go on our website and uh, let us know what it is that you want to do so that join hands with us as we try to help the people in haiti and god will really richly bless you nothing that you do for somebody else goes unnoticed by god if you do something with all your heart you're trying to help the people of God, then God will surely reward you. Hallelujah. You know, as I was talking to people about this hurricane and this phenomenon that happened, I was surprised to see how many assumptions that people can make about how did this hurricane happen. Why did it happen at exactly this particular time? And to some people, they were saying that, you know what, um, this town got hit worse than this other one. It's because they do too much witchcraft. It's because these people, they are very wicked. So it's a punishment uh, from God. God is tired um, of them. So that is why. I mean, I have heard from... Monday to today that I'm talking to you, I have had so many suggestions, assumptions about why it is that this hurricane hit Haiti. And I want to encourage people tonight for you to know that Jesus Christ, even though we're going through problems, and even though we cannot even, as we sit here, we cannot even imagine what it is for the people over there not having a house not knowing where your food is going to come from being separated from the world and already you did not have enough we, none of us can imagine what uh, what is going to their mind but what i can say is that jesus christ he's still alive he still hears and he still answers prayers he is still the lord god almighty and as we are going to look in the book of Colossians, what Jesus said, that because he died on the cross, he did the entire work for us. And we are still believing God. We are still trusting God. We know that God, he is in control. He is in control of everything. And he is in control of our lives. So no matter what challenges that we see around us, no matter what tribulation we are looking at and see that people are going through. And no matter how hard the situation may be, God is still on the throne. He does not sleep. He does not slumber. He did not go to sleep and allow this to happen. The word of God says he, he does not sleep. He is always watching 
is always watching over us. He is still in control. So I want us to take a look at the book of Colossians, chapter 2. If you have your Bible, you can follow through with me. We are going to read the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 9, and then after that, verse 13, 14, and 15. So verse 9 says, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. Every power and authority. Hallelujah. You have been given. He has given us fullness in Christ. And Christ is the head over every power and authority. And verse 13 and 14. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross you know jesus christ said while he was on the cross that it is finished whatever that he needed to do he had done it and it does not matter what powers because sometimes people think that all these demonic powers are after them all these demonic powers are acting out and doing all of all of this and they are just they are victims to what is going on. But then Jesus Christ said that, you know what? He has given us the fullness of God. Whatever it is, our sins, everything that could have stood against us, he nailed them to the cross when he died on the cross for us, when he shed his blood for us. He gave us authority. He gave us power. He gave us the fullness of God so that we can stand in that authority. We can stand in the fullness of God. We can stand in authority and not be victim. We can stand knowing that we are victorious, knowing that Christ did not die in vain, but he died so that he can not only, he took our sins to the cross. He make, made a way for us to be redeemed. He reconciled us with God through his blood. But then he said, he, he took, a, he gave us the power. And for all these powers and authorities that exist, he said he disarmed them. When he died on the cross for us, he disarmed them actually he, he made a public spectacle of them and he gave us the authority he gave us power so we are not you know victims we are not just there and everything else in our environment is just taking us all over the place and we have no control over it we are not pawns in the, end, in the hands of the enemy, in the hands of the powers and authority that just take us and do whatever that they want with us. But we have been given authority by Jesus Christ when he died on the cross for us. He gave us authority, he gave us power, and he made us to be victorious. Now, it is a matter of us knowing that Yes, we are going to go through. And maybe you are watching today, you are going through challenges. And maybe, you know what, you have lost so many things in, in this hurricane. Maybe you, you built a house and now the house is, is gone. Maybe you have a business in Haiti and now the business is gone. Everything is gone. But I want you to take courage to know that God is with you. God is still with you. He's still watching over you. And 
you have the power. You are not subject to whatever that the power, eight demonic powers want to do to you. Because you can stand on the power of God. You can stand on the word of God and know that God has complete control over your life. Maybe there's a hurricane in your life. It is not a physical hurricane, but what you're going through, it, it's hitting you like, you know, it's a, it's a hurricane. And maybe it's, maybe it's divorce that you did not expect that to happen. It's hitting you so hard. Maybe it's your, your finances. Something happened and now you are down to your last penny and it's just hitting you so, so hard. Debts that are just piling up. And you are looking at them and you don't know where, what is going to happen. Or how you are going to be able to take care of your debts. And maybe it's a sickness that, is, that you don't know, even know what to do anymore. Because you think that there is, there is no hope. There is no hope for you. And you are completely dis discouraged thinking that that is the end. And maybe as I'm talking you have, you have lost your job. You know, you, you, you were let go from your job and you did not know it. It was all of a sudden. And it's, it's hitting you that it's going to take time for you to find another job. And you don't know how you're going to make ends meet. You know, you, it may be that you feel like you're going crazy. You feel like you're losing your mind. You, because there is so many storms hitting you. And you don't know where you're going and you don't know what is going to happen. It feels like it feels like a hurricane has hit your life, and what you are left with is like you know the aftermath, the devastation of of what that that has done in your life. But I want you to know that God has given you control. Jesus Christ said He has already triumphed over everything that can be in your life. And because of that, you also, you have the victory. You also, you are, you are more than a conqueror. Be resilient. That resilience is in you. You know, the people in my country are so resilient. I watch the people in Haiti are so resilient. Because I watch as they were showing that the, one of the bridges were, was gone. I mean, the bridge that they could use to cross from one way to the other, the bridge is completely gone. And they could have just lied down on the ground, saying, you know what, the bridge is gone. Or am I ever going to go from one side to the other? This is the way that I can get a little bit to feed myself, to feed my kids. I have to be able to cross that bridge. And the bridge is no longer there. The bridge is gone. But I saw them holding, in with, holding hands with each other, crossing the waters. And the waters were strong because some of them wanted to fall, but the other ones would hold on to them. So they made a human, they made a human chain. And they managed with stuff on their heads, stuff under their arms, they managed to cross. Because they said, you know what? This is not going to stop us. We need to, to do something. And we are not going to just lie down and die because we don't know when help is going to get to us. So they decided to do something about it. You know, so when there, when there is a hurricane in your life, you need to be strong, need to be resilient. But at the same time, you need to have some prayer, prayer warriors. <coughs> you, need, you need to have prayer warriors, prayer intercessors who will make a chain with you so that prayers can be going up unto God. Just like the people in Haiti, when they realized the situation, they saw that for, for them to be able to make it to the other side, they had to do a chain. They had to hold on to each other. And so that's the same thing. And that's the same thing for you too. When a hurricane hits you, and it's terrible, you need those prayer warriors. You need those prayer intercessors to make that chain of prayer 
with you, for you, on your behalf, to travel before the throne of God so that you can receive your divine, your divine solution. You know, I don't know today what your hurricane is. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's the IRS. Maybe it's taxes that you have to pay. Maybe it's you've been going to a divorce. Maybe it's betrayal. You know, and maybe it's addiction. You are addicted to something that you cannot get yourself out of it. Maybe it's bankruptcy. You lost your job. You don't have a job. Or you've been, you've been looking for a job and you have not been able to get one. Maybe you, are, you have lost your strength spiritually. And it's, it's demonic attacks to the point that you cannot sleep at night. You know, maybe you're sick. I don't know what you, I don't know what your hurricane is today. Maybe you're fighting with your families. There is no unity in your family and, you're, and you guys are fighting. You know, be resilient. Be strong. Stand strong knowing that Jesus Christ has already given you the victory. Knowing that victory is yours. And he has given you power and authority. You have the power. You have the authority in Jesus Christ. You have the power and authority to be able to stand firm, to stand strong, putting on all the armor of God, believing God, believing in his promises, trusting and relying on God, knowing that he has you in the palm of his hands, knowing that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is always with you. Be strong and stand, stand firm. Let's take, let's take a break and we'll be right back to finish. isolated village on the island of Haiti, Rene Godefroy was an impoverished child, constantly afflicted with disease and malnutrition. Abandoned by his father and left behind while his mother sought work in Port-au-Prince, Rene survived on meager charity and the rare fish he caught with a string and